Hello everyone, welcome to week three of our advanced webinar series, Cre Creating and Using Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, or NDVI, from satellite imagery. My name is Amber McCollum, and I will speak to you today uh, before we jump into our live demo. Just as a check, can everyone hear me okay? All right, I'm seeing some yeses, so thank you very much. As a reminder, we will we'll have one lecture per week, each Wednesday at 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern. You can find all the course materials on the website listed. This includes past recordings, data links, and homework exercises. We will have a Q&A session at the end of of each week. Where you can also also email myself or my colleague Cindy Schmidt at the email address listed below. Each week we will have a follow on homework. The homework will be similar to the exercise we complete in class. To receive credit for the homework, you must submit all the answers via Google Forms by the deadline. Note that the deadline for the week three homework is in two weeks, Wednesday, March 9th. And the deadline for this week's homework is today, so be sure to get all of your homeworks in. To receive a certificate of completion, you must attend all four live webinars and complete all four homework assignments. It takes some time to process these certificates, so you can expect to receive them about two months after the completion of the course. Also, as a reminder, when you submit your homework via Google Forms, you will receive a um, completion uh, notification within your browser, but you will not receive a completion email. Uh, we will be sending emails and answer keys to the homework later on in a few weeks, so just as a heads up. As mentioned, you can access all the course materials here. Each week, you'll be able to find a PDF of the PowerPoint presentation in both English and Spanish, any data necessary, and the PDF of each week's in-class exercise, a link to view the recordings, and a link to the Google form for the homework submission. Please note that in order to view the recordings, you must register. This helps us keep track of who is viewing them. Once you register, you'll automatically be taken to the, to the recording. On this week's agenda, we have the MODIS NDVI time series. This week, we will first review MODIS sensor characteristics. We will also compare them to Landsat. We will then have live demonstrations of two tools for acquiring NDVI data products from the GLAM project. This will include ac accessing MODIS NDVI imagery online and generating NDVI graphs for yearly comparisons. Finally, if there's time, we'll have a 10-minute Q&A uh, Q session. Because we have a long record length of Landsat and MODIS imagery, we can use information spanning long time periods to better understand patterns in vegetation. NDVI anomalies are departures from the long period average. It indicates whether the vegetation greenness at a particular location is typical for a period of the year or whether the vegetation is more or less green. 
thus providing information about vegetation health, land de degradation, changes in precipitation, and the timing of green up events. These figures provide an example of how NDVI anomalies can be used to identify drought conditions. This figure here at the top shows a typical yearly vegetation pattern in purple, this line here, using N average NDVI values from 2000 to 2016, with the green up event occurring in the summer and senescence of the leaves in the fall and winter. Additionally, the red line shows vegetation conditions in 2015 and 2016. While the general pattern of vegetation is similar, the values are lower. This could indicate poor vegetation health associated with a decrease in precipitation. Graphs like this are available from the GLAM project, which we will demo later in this, uh, this week. The bottom two figures show NDVI anomalies, with Ethiopia on the left experiencing below average NDVI values during the 1984 drought, and the Southwest US experiencing, in 2004, experiencing widespread below average NDVI values. You may also notice that parts of Texas in the Central Plains here are above average. As a quick review before we jump into our demos, we will discuss the MODIS characteristics and online data portals. MODIS is one of the key imaging instruments for the NASA Earth Observing System. It is designed to measure large scale global dynamics across lands, oceans, and the atmosphere. Flying on two satellites, Terra and Aqua, allows the MODIS sensor to capture imagery of the same area on Earth at different times of the day. MODIS imagery has varying spatial resolution depending on the product you're interested in, from 250 meters to one kilometer. The temporal resolution also varies daily from eight day, 16 day, monthly, and yearly composites. These data are available from 2000 to present. The original data format is HDF. However, there are new sites that provide MODIS products as files such as GeoTIFFs, that are easily digestible into geospatial software such as QGIS. Spectrally, it has 36 bands, and the major bands of interest are in the visible and infrared shown at the bottom of this slide. The MODIS tiles, or the area over which a MODIS image is obtained, is much larger when compared to Landsat. This figure shows MODIS tiles compared to Landsat tiles. The red dots shown here are the center of each Landsat scene. And the smaller brown squares here are the area over which a Landsat scene covers. The larger blue tiles represent an, an entire MODIS scene. So as you can see, they cover a much larger area. The MODIS naming convention is similar to the Landsat naming convention, which we reviewed last week. The first part of the name is actually the product number. It could be MOD, which means it comes from the Terra satellite. It could be MYD, which means it comes from Aqua, or MCD, which means it's a combined Terra and Aqua product. The next part of the name is the instrument it comes from, so MODIS. Next is the platform, either Terra or Aqua, or Combine. Then the name indicates the parameter, in this case it's surface reflectance. Then it provides the temporal resolution, which is 8-day, but it could also be 16-day or monthly. Then it provides the processing level, which we just dis uh, discussed previously. Then it has the spatial resolution and the projection the data are in. in this case,
sinus. And this is useful for for understanding the project Especially when we uh, pull the into to RG geospatial software Then the file type, which in this case. is red
All right. Hi, everyone. This is Cindy Schmidt, and I'm going to just, like I say, bear with us a minute while I bring up the website. And while we're doing this, I just wanted to uh, let you know that um, based on some questions we had last week about EVI, we gave you the formula for EVI. So Amber did that a few minutes ago. Um, and that's so you can go ahead and calculate your own enhanced vegetation index using Landsat, or you can download the MODIS product on your own uh, without, um, you know, having to sort of just, if you want Landsat higher resolution rather than um, downloading MODIS data. Uh, next week, I wanted to give you a heads up that we'll also be giving you some formula as for some vegetation in the seas that deal with some of the Uh, shortcomings. Shortcomings. of the end And so again.
form formulas that we gave you last Last week, week that you can use. in huge yes With land, land stack. that you Can actually apply by a Any of the these in the sea. Use using land sat day. Um, it in cute. Yes. So
hopefully you'll take advantage of that. So this week, we're going to focus on a couple really interesting web tools where you'll be able to use uh, MODIS data to get vegetation indices globally, anywhere um, on the globe, and then also get some interesting time series graphs as well as MODIS <clears throat> anomalies. So the first website we're going to look at uh, where we'll be looking at NDVI time series. So you can see the website here. The first thing we're going to need to do is pick our region of interest. So in order to do that, you select the region here, and we're going to start with Africa East 1. So we select Africa East 1 here, and a new part of the website will show up. Okay, so you can see a whole lot of things going on here. We'll start at the very top of this website. So the information at the top includes your region that you selected. In this case, it's Africa East 1. The product type, which says Mod 44 or MYD 44. So that's the 16 day and composite it and then the other choice is actually the M O O D O nine. And M ID. Oh nine. See if you you click on on the little drop down. Um, arrow here that.
eight days. composite it so we're just it's going to Leave it at with the mod forty four and the MYD forty. products selected The date it is so or as you can select select from the Terra Or awkward. Satellite. Lights. Or both. both. So we're just going to. Leave the Parasite. Satellite right right
now. Where you can see here. Says Tara. Am only And then this last last one. is it's the form born at Agricultural service near real time data. So we'll we'll leave. This option selected as well.
So if you look down here, the first image you'll see at the top is the most current NDVI image for this region. And the region again is Africa East One. On them, you can uh, put them into the chat box and we will answer them as they come. Um, if you have additional questions that we can't answer here, you can email at us at the, web, at the email address listed here. If you have general questions, you can email our um, program manager, Anna Pradas, and then the RSET website is listed here um, at the bottom. So, Thank you all for participating today. And as a reminder, as Cindy mentioned, we will. So I see somebody asked a question um, that there, why are there no, why is There are no data for some parts of West Africa. Most often.